Hello and welcome to this GSSE Science Additional Physics Revision video on forces. In this video we will look at resultant force, force and acceleration, falling objects and stretching. An object may have several different, several different forces acting on it which have different strengths and different directions but they can be added together to give the resultant force. This is a single force that has the same effect on the object as all of the individual forces acting together. If the resultant force is zero, a moving object will stay at the same speed. If there is no resultant force, then the system is said to be at equilibrium. If the resulting force is not zero, a moving object will speed up or slow down depending on the direction of the resulting force. It will either speed up if the resulting force is in the same direction as the moving object, or it will slow down if the resulting force is in the opposite direction. When all the forces are balanced, the resultant force is zero. So a stationary object will remove stationary, and a moving object will stay moving in the same direction and at the same speed. When all the forces are not balanced, the resultant force is not zero. A station object will begin to move in the direction of the resultant force, and a moving object will either speed up or slow down. You should know that objects accelerate when resultant force is not zero and you need to understand the factors that affect the size of acceleration. An object will accelerate in the direction of the resultant force. The bigger the force, the greater the acceleration. So doubling the size of the resultant force will double the acceleration. An object will accelerate in the direction of the resultant force. A force on a large mass will accelerate it less than the same force on a smaller mass. Doubling the mass halves the acceleration. The equation that you will need to use to work this out is resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration. So if we have a look at this example, you can see from this equation that one newton is the force needed to give one kilogram an acceleration of one meter per second. For example, the force needed to accelerate a 10 gram mass by 5 meters per second is 10 times 5, so it's 50 newtons. The same force would accelerate a 1 kilogram mass by 50 meters per second squared, or a 100 kilogram mass by 0.5 meters per second squared. Putting it simply, we can say that it takes more force to accelerate a larger mass. There are two main forces that affect falling objects when falling from a uh, high height. Remember that this can also be referred to as it reaching terminal velocity. So the two things that will affect it are the weight of an object, that is the force acting downwards caused by the Earth's gravitational field, and air resistance. This is the force or the frictional force acting in the opposite direction. We can see from this graph that when a person first jumps out, so at the start the object accelerates downwards because of its weight. There is very little air resistance. There is a resultant force acting downwards. The acceleration is constant when the object is close to the earth. As it gains speed, the object's weight stays the same, but the air resistance on it increases. The resultant force or there is a force acting backwards on it now. Eventually, when the object's weight is balanced by the air resistance, there is no resultant force, and the object will continue to fall at the same velocity. This is referred to as terminal velocity. Forces may change the shape of an object. An elastic object, such as a spring, 
which stores the elastic potential energy when stretched or squashed. The extension of an elastic object is directly proportional to the force applied to it, which means that if, for instance, we put a force of 2 onto it, its extension would be 2 metres. If we put a force of 4 on it, then its extension would be 4. Elastic objects can also store potential energy when they're squashed. For example, this happens when a squash ball is dropped onto a hard surface. Work is done on an elastic object when the shape changes and it stores elastic potential energy. When an elastic object, such as a spring, is stretched, this increases the length of it proportionately. This is called Hooke's Law. The equation for this is force equals the spring constant times by extension. The spring constant K is different for different objects and materials. It is found out by carrying out the experiment, an experiment. For example, the unloaded length of a spring is measured, different numbers of slotted masses are added to the spring, and the new length is measured each time. The extension is the new length minus the unloaded length. Assuming the limit of proportionality is not exceeded, the graph of force against extension produces a straight line that passes through the origin. The gradient of the spring of the line is the spring constant. The greater the value of k, the stiffer the spring is. So remember, when revising, start earlier rather than later. Remember, when revising questions that involve equations, keep testing yourselves using questions. Put together flashcards that have a question on one side and the answer on the other. Good luck with your physics exam.